Green. <clears throat> Good morning again, and welcome on the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A warm welcome to our parishioners and everyone visiting us online or in person this weekend. Just a few reminders. When coming to Mass for your safety and that of others, please follow the guidance of the ushers on where to be seated and when to exit. Keep your face mask or shield on at all times, covering both your mouth and nose. In place of the regular way of offering the sign of peace, a bow or nod of the head and a verbal greeting of peace should be used. If you have a contribution for our parish, you may drop it in the wooden collection boxes near the baptismal font as you leave. Weekday public Masses are offered at 9 a.m. Tuesday through Friday. Wednesday is our Mass for seniors. There is no registration for weekday Masses. However, please continue to res res register for weekend Masses. In celebration of the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, please join us in two weeks on Saturday, October 3rd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a drive-through blessing of animals. Deacon Francis Rodinger will be out in front of the church at the Piazza, blessing family pets as you drive through. The presider at this Mass is our pastor, Monsignor Joseph Lehman, assisted by Deacon Bill Westerman. Please stand and greet those around you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our God is just and generous, but sometimes our God is generous to people we don't think he should be generous too. And that's what we hear in our gospel today. To prepare ourselves to hear that message, let us ask forgiveness for the times when we thought that God should be more generous to us 
rather to them. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. 
The Lord is great and highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord unto all, compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call on him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? 
They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. This parable always reminds me of my brother. I reflect on his life, and to a lesser extent, to my own. I always looked up to him. He was kind and loving, and he helped me through some very tough times. My brother, actually my half-brother, was 15 years older. He joined the army at 17 and quickly served two tours in Vietnam. That and 20 years with the 101st Airborne Division left him physically and spiritually broken. He essentially could not hear God calling him to come back to the vineyard. He remained idle and lost for just about his whole life. His yoke was heavy and his burden was great. The last time I visited him in the hospital, right before he died, I entered his room and he was sleeping. I saw joy and peace in his face, the pain and the agony from the cancer was virtually gone. When he woke, he told me that he had saw a priest the day before. He confessed his sins and took the Eucharist after decades. I knew then that he had received his reward. Today, he is still with me, always guiding me, still cultivating fruit in God's vineyard. Jesus uses this parable today to challenge our sense of justice and the worldly context in which many of us would place this story. In fact, that is explicitly what the owner of the vineyard promises to the laborers who harvest his fruit, justice, in the form of just compensation for the amount of labor provided. Yet, he delivers what seems at first blush to be most unjust results, paying everyone for the same amount of money for unequal effort. The apparent injustice is obvious, however, Jesus' ultimate lesson is found below the surface of the text. This is not a lesson on economic or social justice, but about the understanding the unfathomable love and generosity of God. In this parable, as in so many others, Jesus tells his disciples and all the listeners about the kingdom of God and about their salvation by putting it into understandable human terms. His larger audience, in this case, were the Israelites, the group from which the the disciples came, who saw the Messiah as a mechanism for temporal salvation and their identity as a mechanism for eternal salvation. However, this parable warns the Israelites that they will not be alone in eternal salvation, nor will they have a greater share of it than others. As in other parables, Jesus warns against the arrogance of presumption, even for those who think they are already saved. Do not look on others with envy or contempt. 
if perceived transgressors receive the same, same rewards as the righteous. Remember, Jesus was called a drunkard and a sinner who hung around with tax collectors and prostitutes. C.S. Lewis had a marvelous passage in his screw tape letters in which the devil urged his nephew tempter Wormwood to attack a mother's sense of injustice that her son may have recommitted himself to Christianity through some other path than her own teachings. We know people who have converted late in life, and while we know intellectually that it has no bearing on salvation in eternity, it can t still tug at our senses of temporal justice, which can produce envy and jealousy about those folks getting the same deal we got, even though we got there first and have been working at it much longer. Remember the brother and the prodigal son. The son who is righteous is shown to have suffered from the same fault when he saw his brother, his prodigal brother, enjoy, enjoying great honor, even more than himself. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? But God's thoughts are not our thoughts, nor his ways our ways. In this case, the structure of compensation is irrelevant. We are all equal in salvation, and we will receive his reward once we answer God's call. The landowner goes out at dawn to look for those who will join him in his work of salvation. He goes out again and again, no matter how late the hour, to find those who are idle or lost, poor physically and spiritually, in order to invite them into his vineyard. We can look at this in a historical perspective on the economy of salvation, from Adam and Eve to the present day. And we can also look at that in the history of the church or in our own families and communities. We can and should look at it in the course of our own lives as his call comes at various times to bring us back into the love of the Lord and into the vineyard of salvation. God needs cultivators in his vineyard, and he wants us to help him. No matter how late the hour, we can all rejoin the harvest, not as a sense of fairness, but one of awe at the love and generosity of the Creator. And our gentle toll in the vineyard does not help us gain dignity as, as laborers, but to help us obtain the divine inheritance as his children. When we see that, we also see the dignity and grace of our fellow vineyard workers in the one harvest as collective children of God. And we are blessed to have the same compensation in the end. When we look at this parable from this perspective, the landowner suddenly becomes very, very fair indeed. So as we prepare to celebrate in the great sacrifice of the Mass, may we all turn to Jesus and ask him, how can we better serve the Father in his vineyard? And ask to receive the needed grace to help others join in the salvation work of God, forever bearing fruit in his vineyard. And may we all rejoice exceedingly as fruitful members in the kingdom of God. Church, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we lift our voices to the Lord. For the church, may she proclaim the good news of God's love to the poor and all in need of mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, through God's grace, may they work to eliminate war, terror, anger, hatred, and all cruelty toward humankind. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this catechetical Sunday, may the Holy Spirit inspire those called to catechetical ministry, particularly leaders, teachers, parents, and all those enrolled in our children's faith formation, enabling them to teach what they believe and live and live what they teach, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and our country, may we become ever more aware of the dignity of all human life, from conception to natural death, the beauty of God's plan for marriage and the significance of full and authentic religious liberty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, we give thanks for the gift of our Hispanic brothers and sisters and their culture, contributions, and community they bring. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military, may God bless those who have served our country in the past and guard those who now go about the work of protecting us and our freedoms. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and injured, as well as those facing or recovering from surgery. May they know the healing touch of Christ, the divine physician, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, Paul Richard Adams Sr., Merrill Hutchins, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and for all the dead, and in memory of Patricia Herndon, may they inherit the promise of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers that you've brought with you today. You welcome those who heed your call, God and master of the vineyard, no matter how late the hour or how meager their labor. For all is your grace, unmerited and free. Let us who rejoice in your graciousness toward us never begrudge your generosity toward us, towards others. May we work together without ceasing for the coming of your kingdom. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, will be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive with favor, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them, by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, too, we confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who might seek you might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first gifts for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us and as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, 
he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by this Holy Spirit, they might truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Jesus Christ, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you process to receive Holy Communion, Please follow the guidance of the ushers. We strongly encourage choosing to receive communion on the hand. When you receive the host, please step to the side where there is a yellow marking on the floor before lifting your mask to consume the host. If you are wearing gloves, please remove them before receiving communion on the hand. After receiving communion, please go to your seat using the aisle on the other side of your section of pews. Remain in place until the end of mass and wait for the ushers to dismiss each section before leaving. We thank you for your patience while these precautions remain in place. Sheep and mine know me. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. Alleluia. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. Alleluia. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. Alleluia. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. It, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. Alleluia. I know my sheep and mine know. Alleluia, Alleluia.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just one announcement. This Thursday, we celebrate the solemnity of Our Lady of Walsingham. Join us online as we live stream Mass at 9 a.m. from the Shrine, Angelus at, and Rosary at noon, and a special presentation at 3 p.m. by Michelle Spike, author of the book, The Holy House, A History of the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. In addition, you are invited to visit the Shrine downtown for an open house Thursday from 10 a.m. to noon and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And that will be our live stream mass that day, but there will be an in-person mass here um, on Ironbound Road. Parents and guardians, you are entrusted with a special role of responsibility in forming your children in the faith. For the pastoral activity of the church, the cooperation of a great many volunteers is also needed to serve as catechists for children, for serving with high school teens, and those serving as adult faith formation catechists, including the RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. On this Catechetical Sunday, we offer a blessing to our catechists, and all parents and guardians, and that includes grandparents by the manner of their life. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son Jesus Christ to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith, hope, and love to all nations. In your goodness, bless our brothers and sisters who have offered themselves as catechists for your church. Bless, too, all parents and guardians, the first and primary catechists for their children. Strengthen them with your gifts, that they may teach by word and by example the truth that comes from you. May they grow in wisdom, understanding, and grace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
sweet cry. 